Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's. Today's Mass celebrates the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our celebrant this morning will be Father Joseph. We ask that you please turn off all cell phones and any electronic devices during the Mass, and please stand and join us in our opening hymn, Save Us, O Lord. Save us, O Lord, carry us back. Wrong was your power and come. Rescue your people, show us your face. Bring us back. O Shepherd of Israel, hear us. Return and we shall be saved. Arise, O Lord, hear our cries, O Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Father. I welcome you to this beautiful celebration as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, in preparation for this sacred mystery, let us now call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my unscrupulous folly. Therefore, I ask the blessing of your religion, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, Lord, our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King. God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You alone sit at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, who shut with endures the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands. When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. to the Lord, his love 
love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. They who sailed the sea in ships, trading on the deep waters, these saw the works of the Lord and his wonders in the abyss. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. His command raised up a storm wind which tossed its waves on high. They mounted up to heaven, they sank to the depths, their hearts melted away in their plight. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. To the Lord in their distress. From their straits he rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the sea were stilled. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is they rejoiced that they were called, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of God impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. To On that day, 
As evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I welcome you to this beautiful Sunday. My name is Father Joseph Ogazi. I originally am from Nigeria, studying at Boston College, and currently a chaplain at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Brighton. So I'm glad to see you today and to have you celebrate this Mass. To begin with, I have a little story to tell you, just to share this story with you. <laughs> the story has it that Jesus, someday on one beautiful morning, went out for a dinner. She went out for a breakfast and had a beautiful breakfast, for that matter. And when he was getting in, it was said that three guys at the door recognized him. The three guys were an Irish, an Italian, and an American. So when they saw him, they said to each other, you know what, this is Jesus. We're going to take care of his bills. So the Irish guy said, you know, I'm going to take care of his bacons and muffins. The Italian guy said, I'm going to take care of all his sausages and all that. So the American guy said, every other thing he's going to eat, I'm going to pay for it. So at the end of the day, Jesus had a beautiful breakfast. So when he was trying to pay, they told him that the three guys out there had taken care of his bills. So he went out to thank them. In appreciation, Jesus reached out to the Italian guy who was in a wheelchair and blessed him and said, thank you. And the guy on the wheelchair got healed. See, he got up and walked. So Jesus moved next to the Irish guy and blessed him and said, thank you. The Irish guy on a wheelchair got healed and stood up and walked. So when Jesus moved to the American guy, he said to him, thank you. So Jesus wanted to bless him. He said, don't touch me. So it was, Jesus was like, I want to pray for you. I want to bless you. The guy said, no, don't touch me. Jesus said, why? He said to him, don't touch me because I am on disability. Yeah. <laughs> My dear friends, sometimes Jesus would like to reach out to us, but the problem is we are not able to understand his blessings, the richness of his blessings in our lives. Today, we celebrate the fathers. I wish all the fathers here a happy Father's Day. I welcome you, dear fathers. I welcome you in a special way today. We celebrate you. And the readings of today demonstrates especially what the fathers should look out for. I would begin by sharing this experience of a dear friend and a parishioner who had only a few months to live. Her life had been very complex. 
All his, her life had been woven with unforeseen sorrows, scary moments. Even a visit from family members had left her unsettled and worried as she faced the final goodbyes. It was as if God had forsaken him, forsaken her. She began to feel that she had done what she has done in life was sad, sinful, and unforgivable. She called up to me, probably as a chaplain in the hospital, not knowing what to expect, if there was any hope for her, afraid even to ask, lest she finds out that her pastoral visit was really her final door. At the end of our visit, my visit with her to this woman, we settled into a quiet conversation. I sensed she was clutching at straws, trying to pin down the mystery of life and death with some logical explanation. As she turned and twisted her life this way and the other way, I understand she was in deep pain and sorrow. She was going through an enlargement of her spirit at some point, trying to understand that God is really there. Even when I was not able to speak, she was able to begin to realize the presence of God, even in the midst of pains. It was a difficult moment for her. As I listened to her tell me a little story of her life, there came to my mind the image of a sleeping St. Joseph, which has currently been popularized by Pope Francis. The study of sleeping St. Joseph. Here, St. Joseph was depicted as the new guardian and foster father of not just Jesus Christ, the baby Jesus, but the light of the world and the son of eternal one. Jesus, St. Joseph at this point is being depicted again as that man who was keeping imminent danger as Herod sought to kill the infant Jesus. They were resting tired and exhausted in the desert as they were escaping to Egypt, and Joseph slept. The stakes were too high for him to rely on his own strategy to care for the Son of God and the Son of Mary. The sleeping of Joseph and his dreams, of course, you can agree with me, is an indication of his acknowledging his weakness, his sorrow, as well as his trust in the mysterious strategies of the Eternal One. It is an image of a good father who relied on God. It is an image of a good Christian who understands what God has for us in store, his riches and his blessings. Jesus today was in the boat. Possibly he invited the disciples and the apostles for a boat ride. But what happened? He slept off, trusting in God the Father who has given him the mission and the ministry. Shall we trust in God? For us fathers and for those to whom is entrusted the care of younger people, how can we trust our whole effort and our life unto God? As I was reflecting on today's readings, I came across a short speech made by Hein Ginot, who was a Jewish child psychologist and survivor of holocausts. Addressing a group of teachers, Hein Ginot has this to say, I am a survivor of a concentration camp my eyes saw what no person should witness. Gas chambers built by learned engineers. Children poisoned by educated physicians. Infants killed by trained nurses. 
women and babies shot by high school and college graduates. So, I am suspicious of education. My request is this. Help your children become human. Your efforts must never produce learned monsters, skilled psychopaths, or educated yankmans. Reading, writing, and arithmetic are important only if they serve to make our children more human. And that cannot happen unless we train their hearts to see the things that are of real worth and value for authentic humanity. It is an option for us, my dear friends, parents, fathers, to choose the right way, relying on God's mercy, providence, and blessing, and help to make a better society, to build a new generation. Jesus today tells us, hope in me, trust in me. You shall never lack anything. May God strengthen us and help us, especially fathers among us, to be the good fathers, to show the good example, to strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. Could you please stand? Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was, in, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He is handed into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, with the truth prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us bring our petitions to God the Father. For the church in the world, may the Lord protect her from all evil as she testifies to the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. For those who feel burdened by the storms in their lives, May the hope of Christ bring them peace. We pray to the Lord. For the safety of our country and those who are serving as military and first responders, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they rejoice in the presence of God in his eternal kingdom, especially members of our Mass Intention Guild and all our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all priests and seminarians for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. And for all parents, especially those dealing with medical issues, for whom this Mass is offered, 
we pray to the Lord. God of majesty and glory, hear the prayers we bring to you in the name of Jesus, our King and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Here I Am, Lord. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offerings of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you send us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we are clear. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Holy, O Lord, 
and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said blessings, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who we are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. In ipso met cun ipso et in ipso est ibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti in unitate Spiritus Sancti omnis ohono et gloria per omnia secula seculorum. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace behold the Lamb of God behold he who takes away the sins of the world Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is This Alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, Catherine Roman from Abundant Hope Pregnancy Center would like to offer a brief thank you for the donation the center has received from us. We welcome her. Good morning, everyone. I'm Catherine Roman. I'm chairman of the board of Abundant Hope Pregnancy Resource Center. And really, it's my privilege to visit your beautiful church today and to thank you all and the Knights of Columbus for generously donating to Abundant Hope. Uh, I just want to acknowledge the Knights, Sean, John DiPietro, and all that you do for the pro-life mission. Uh, we are very grateful. A little bit about Abundant Hope Pregnancy Resource Center, if you don't know about us. We're located in Attleboro, Massachusetts, uh, right down the road from Sturdy Hospital. Uh, we're actually located next door to the only abortion clinic in our community, in all of southeastern Massachusetts. We serve women from over 30 towns, Foxborough, Mansfield, Norton, North Attleboro. Uh, our mission is to help women who faced an unplanned pregnancy and feel fear, feel hopeless. Uh, their own family members tell them that abortion is the only choice. Our mission exists just to provide love, compassion for women in their time of need. Um, there's no judgment. We offer resources, diapers, formula. Uh, we provide free ultrasounds. In fact, everything we do is free and it's all based on the generosity of don donations from people like you all. If anybody would ever like to come and see the center, um, please call us and happy to arrange a tour. It's really beautiful. Um, we are always looking for volunteers if you feel uh, uh, that God has placed that on your heart to help out. And we have an annual dinner uh, it's going to be virtual this year because uh, we didn't, we weren't sure about how COVID was going to play out. It's Thursday, September 23rd at 7 p.m. If you'd like to attend, just call the center and uh, give your email, and we'll send you a link, and you can watch from the uh, just the comfort of your home. So, thank you very much for your donation. We are very grateful. Thank you folks for being part of this mess today. On behalf of the pastor and Father Timothy, I wish to thank you for having me, and I wish you a blessed week. God bless you. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the mass is ended. Our recessional hymn is Though the Mountains May Fall. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name sing the praise and the glory of god could the lord ever leave you could the lord forget his love though a mother forsake her child he will not abandon you though the mountains may fall 
when the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on His name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Have a good Sunday and happy Father's Day. <laughs>